Today we welcome back a recurring guest at Investor Intel, John Lee from Prophecy Development. Hi, John. Hi, Pierre. Good to be back. Last time we chatted, I think, was in December. Around that time frame, four months, three or four months ago, yes. A lot has happened to the project since. Now, first, we should uh, remind our viewers it's a vanadium project. You have three of them, but we're really talking about one of them. It's in the lovely mining-friendly state of Nevada, and it has some advanced permitting on it from prior owners. That's correct, Peter. Tell us, what's the project called? The project's name is Jibalini. It's located uh, just about 20 miles south of Eureka in the, south, in the southern Battle Mountain region in northeastern Nevada. Right, so you have Battle Mountain, Florida Canyon, Mill City is that way. Well, it's uh, close to everywhere, but not too close to nowhere. I mean, it's a four, four half hour, five hour drive from Vegas, three hour drive from Reno, and five hours drive from Salt Lake City. And uh, I've just recently made a trip there. I've uh, traveled uh, from all those three, all those three different locations, uh, getting to the property. So yes. what? So what's happening at the project now? Well, I think uh, Peter, when we last talked, the project, the project really has a four competitive differentiators. The project is uh, ideally located, according to the Fraser Institute, one of the best places to do mining investments in North America. That hasn't changed. Nevada is still a, um, great, it's a great jurisdiction. Yes. Um, the price of Vanadium has gone up 40% since January. Any addition to that, thanks to Donald Trump's tax policy, the uh, corporate tax rate has dropped from 35% to 21%. The project had a feasibility study uh, that was um, prepared by this previous operator and of which we'd expect to announce a revision. And the numbers so far looks very, very promising. I mean, you have lower tax rate and higher metal prices and right. both very well for the project going forward. Good. And, um, not, and not to mention, um, I think the other thing is on the permitting, the previous operator also did extensive baseline studies. Nevada, even though it's mining friendly, but the permitting aspect is not for the faint hearted. And uh, we had a, a huge leg up in that the baseline studies and plan of operation is being uh, submitted and deemed accepted by the uh, Bureau of Land and Management. Right. And I was just in Nevada. We, we sat down with these guys. They're very eager to put, to uh, advance this project forward. In fact, uh, the state of Nevada, a PDAC conference in Toronto just a week ago, had a Jubilini project uh, front and center on the first page of their brochure. Uh, so we felt like the permitting side is also making some good advances, as well as the feasibility study, which we're looking for uh to uh, publish a revision very soon, within the next 30 days. You had some pretty good news come out today. It's the kind of news that some people will overlook and fail to understand why it's so important. Tell us about that. Yeah, you know, even though there's a little doldrum in the metals market, we generated a big, a good volume. Uh, this morning, we announced the news of a par technical partnership with a company called NWME, Northwest non Ferris Mining Company. They're one of the largest mining companies in China. They're state-owned. The third largest zinc and lead producer in China. They also are the owner and operating uh, China's largest lead shell vanadium mine. Actually, it's the world's largest. Um, the deposit is very similar to Jibilini's, and there are very few black shell deposits out there that are undergoing what we call the hydrometallurgical process instead of the pyro pyrometallurgical process. The difference being the dehydromet process, we are dissolving the metals in uh, sulfuric acid, of which then we can precipitate and extract. Whereas the pyro techniques uh, requires a permitting of a furnace and it's a um, very large copper footprint and very energy intensive. So we're very, very fortunate to have uh, partnered uh, with this uh, very well endowed group of uh, Chinese, uh, uh, this, this company, both, both, both that are good in technology and as well as, as very good uh, financial financial capabilities. So, so we couldn't be more pleased. Uh, was there an offtake of any kind involved? Well, at this stage, what they really specialize in is extraction of vanadium. Right. There is a lot of vanadiums out there all over the world. It's one of actually the most abundant metals in the world, just like lithium. But the extraction of vanadium is scientific, and uh, it's uh, unfortunately there's not a North American mine, a vanadium primary mine today. And that's why we went over to China and looked for the best. And they came away mighty impressed. Um, the offtake, uh, Peter, we don't see it as an issue, as I mentioned earlier to you. Vanadium is actually the best performing electric metals um, in the last 18 months. 
and was the best performing metal in 2017, went up 160%. And so far, the first three months, it's registered a 40% gain. We have people that are cold calling us, Peter. They're literally looking, Googling Vanadium and found prophecy and mean optic. And, uh, and in, in our conversation with the Chinese. That's a great position to be in. Huh? That's a great well, position. We're discussing with the Chinese. I mean, there are literally people calling from all over the world try to secure a year-long contract. And the fact, Peter, that the European Rotterdam Vanadium price is trading at a premium to the Chinese Vanadium price uh, uh, says something about the lack of global inventory. Because typically, because Vanadium is uh, produced in majority in China, the closer you're to the production center, the prices should be lower. Should be lower. Right. And uh, But what you have now... Well, it's a very delicate situation we'll, where the we'll vanadium price is... We'll come back to that next yeah. time. Yes. We'll come back to that one. What is vanadium very, peroxide very trading for right now? Vanadium trading at $14 a pound. Wasn't too up, low. Up from, it was $4 in 2017 low and was $2.50 in 2016. So it's up 500%. But uh, historically speaking, it's still at a 50% pile. His, uh, the uh, Vanadium in 2005 and 2009 has gone up to over $20 a pound. So there's still a lot of upside. So the yeah. next thing we should be looking for then is the updated resource estimate? Yes. Well, there, I think there's uh, three areas of which the company is focusing on and potential catalysts catalyst to value creation and the, and the price appreciation of the company. First of all is a economic independent economic assessment. We did uh, announce a resource estimate in November. There's about close to 200 million pounds of vanadium measure indicated in per category. Right. But in April, we're going to put some solid economic numbers on net present value and internal rate of return um, numbers on them. And just based on uh, looking at uh, the previous numbers, the previous visibility study conducted in 2011 at $11 per pound of vanadium, the numbers are very promising. And now vanadium is $14. So we would expect quite robust numbers coming out in, in, in April. And uh, secondly, um, we're due to also announce uh, 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 for filing of the first permits, first set of permit applications. So we're dusting up the previous permit applications and make some revisions. And then uh, we're going to be one of the very few Vanadian, well, I think we're the only Vanadian junior that's in North America that has filed a permitting application. So that is a great stride, uh, stride forward towards getting this smart fully permitted. And then third but not least is uh, our Chinese partner has uh, spent five days at the at the site, taking a lot of samples. Um, they're testing with their own facilities and looking at uh, optimizing the engineering uh, aspect of the project. Right. And the metallurgy of the project validate. I think we're going to have some sort of news coming from the Chinese labs validating a lot of feasibility, a lot of feasibility work, a lot of the metallurgical work about several years ago. I think that validation will pave itself towards uh, designing uh, the engineering and the procurement and constructions necessary uh, as this next step uh, uh, going, going in parallel with the permitting. With the permitting, uh, with the permitting Those infrastructure effort. issues are important. You look at uh, Namaska Lithium, when it got a building yes. from the government of Quebec, uh, it saved roughly $13 million just on infrastructure. So that infrastructure is important. Well, Peter, we are four kilometers from the river and five kilometers from power, and there's a road right to, right through to it. Our infrastructure cost is absolutely minimal. Good. And um, it is one of the best. As I said, I've been the, the property three times now in, in the past four months. I couldn't ask for a better place to conduct mining business. And uh, everybody, and recently, Peter, I think last but not least, we brought on a great management team since we last talked. Last we talked with a bit of a skeleton because we had just acquired the project less than six months ago when I talked to you. Mm -hmm. And we brought on a VP of operation who is a Barrick veteran, a chief metallurgist for 40 years. And um, again, rock solid guy with patents in Vanadium recovery. We also brought on a permanent consultant with 40 years of experience in permitting uh, environmental impact statements in Western United States and worked for Barrett, King, Ross, and Newman. And we brought on a VP exploration with 17 years experience working for Falcon Bridge and Inco. Wow. So now I've run it up, run it up, excellent team going forward. And we're, we are going very aggressive on both permitting and revision of the economic studies. And then uh, working with the Chinese, we are making concrete steps towards 
uh, construction, um, construction details, detail engineering processing. Okay. Great. So let's check in again in about three months. We'll see how the permitting's going and see how the uh, technical reports are doing. And you know what, Peter? There's not a lot of falling vanadium, but it's one of the sleeper metal. I, I don't think I don't think that's can, investors can ignore this any longer. It's outperformed all the e-metals out there. We're way we're well performed, well way outperformed lithium, way outperformed cobalt. I think it's, a matter, it's only a matter of time our sleepy giant wakes up, Peter. Well, that's a great way to end this. I thank you for your time today. <laughs>